And what I'll do is I ask everybody uh, who's not talking to mute themselves. Um, and what we'll do from each of the candidates for the school board. And um, I will give you three minutes to make an introductory comment, uh, three minutes each, and then we'll go into questions. And I'll just alternate who starts with um, answering different questions. Uh, and the three minutes and answering questions, you're given two minutes. When you're um, three, 30 seconds away from the end, I will hold up this. Say 30, it's like 30 backwards to me on mine. Then when you're 10 seconds away from the end, I'll hold up this. When it's time for you to be quiet, stop. Uh, I do ask that the questions, if at all possible, and it is possible that all questions be less than 30 seconds because I want to hear what the candidates say. I don't want to hear a diatribe or a speech from one of you. I want to hear the candidates. And um, sometimes I'm successful in getting people to shut up and sometimes I'm not. But I do want to hear from the candidates, not from you all. I'll hear from you all later. Um, also, the... Uh, Press that's here, you're free to ask questions too. And you can do so either in the chat or by holding up a hand or the little icon. There's an icon down at the bottom of your Zoom screen that says, um, yeah, raise hand. And it'll it'll pop up a little hand, yellow hand. So you can ask questions that way. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to everybody. I may not. We already have several questions in the chat. But... Uh, I will start, we have uh, three candidates, um, Jean Snodgrass, John Potter, and Alvin Cobbins. And ordinarily I ask them to start out um, doing it alphabetically, but Mr. Cobbins- Alvin's here, he just, he just came in. Oh, oh good, Where, oh, I have to see him. I wanna get them, Mr. Cobbins. Hello. <laughs> I have a location. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it would be nice if I could see what you look like. Uh, hmm. oh. If you could put on the um, video. He's here, honest. I just saw him. Yes. Oh. I, it is. Um, oh, are you Katina I, Allen? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was looking for some, <laughs> your name. All right. Well, okay. Um, I don't know if you heard all of the instructions. You have two, three minutes for an introductory comment. And I will tell yes. you when you're getting close to the end. Okay. And then two, you'll have two minutes to answer questions and I will alternate or rotate who answers first. And for the introductory comments, I usually start alphabetically. And that means Mr. Cobbins, that you are first. And so you have three minutes to say whatever you want. You can recite poetry or you can tell us about yourself whatever so begin yes my name is Alvin Covins and I am a candidate for the school board um I uh have uh 20 years experience in the public sector and 20 years experience in the private sector but for um right now uh, my primary focus is on the school board and the educational system for Columbia public schools and I am the type of person who will listen and who learns from listening. And I also am a person that brings everybody together and resolve issues and all with the primary goal of making sure that Columbia Public Schools districts continues to be a very strong and vibrant school district. And I do believe that together that we can make a difference. And that is my open introduction. Well, thank you. That was um, that was fast. All right. Next one alphabetically <laughs> would be Mr. Potter. Oh, yes. Okay. Hello, my name is John Potter. Um, I have uh, three children, three girls in the school district, one in elementary school, one in middle school, and one in high school. I've um, I participated at Columbia Public Schools myself. I went to um, elementary, junior high, and high school. 
um, here at C Columbia Public Schools. I've been involved with the district for the past four years. Uh, originally, um, um, being a uh, an activist for um, opening up the schools when they were shut down during COVID, and um, through that, I realized that there was a lot of things going on in the district that um, really wasn't uh, focusing on education, and so I um, developed a, a platform for for teachers, community members, and parents to um, to gather in order to, you know, bring up things um, regarding accountability and transparency at CPS. And it's been a a, a big tool for the community and, and has um, brought in a lot of people that otherwise uh, haven't been involved in the school district for a while. So um, I've, I've been very active. I've in CPS, I've went to um, a lot of board meetings in the past four years. I think I've only missed a few. And um, I really have my uh, my ear to the community and and I've um, made a lot of public comments at school board meetings. And so I've, I've been really involved in the district and I am uh, put my foot in the race again. This is my second time running um, in order to uh, uh, bring bring to the school board voices that haven't been heard in a lot of a lot of years. You know, I think that um, without the uh, teachers union endorsement. Um, it's it's very unlikely that that you'll get elected. So I really want to break break out of that. I think um, there's a lot of voices that that haven't been heard, and and I want to uh, represent um, those voices. All right. Well, thank you very much. And finally, uh, Ms. Snodgrass, and I should point out, I've been told, Ms. Snodgrass, you'll have to possibly leave at some point when you have some person you're expecting to deal um, with. They actually, I, it was why I was a minute or so logging in late. They actually were here earlier than expected. Okay, so you don't have to leave. Okay, fine. So I don't have to leave All in right, a minute. It's your, <laughs> it's your turn now. All right, and I apologize. Could you refresh my memory on how long we have for, for Three this? Three minutes. Perfect, thank you so much. So my name is Jean Snodgrass. Um, I currently serve as the vice president of the school board and I'm running for re-election. I... I'm really committed to public schools. Um, that's sort of the the basic piece of it. I have been living here for 11 years in Columbia with my family. I have three children. One is a recent graduate of the Columbia Public School. She's currently a freshman at Mizzou. And I have two that are still in the Columbia Public Schools. It is really important to me that all of our students have opportunities and access to opportunities in a way that is gonna help them achieve and in a way that is gonna set them up for success later in life. And I think that our schools do a really good job and we could be doing a really great job. And I wanna be part of that work that starts to and continues to move the needle. Over the past three years, I think we've seen some shifts in culture. We've definitely seen some new programming. We've seen folks, uh, some issues, right? New issues that have come up that we need to address. And I think there's a lot of good things happening. I think there's also some things we can be looking critically at and saying, is this working the way that it's supposed to work? And I think we have a board right now that is doing that work, that is being supportive in the ways they can be supportive of the things that we need to change because some things aren't working and is also being able to critically examine all of our policies, all of the things that are happening so that we can be the best district for all of our students, for all of our scholars so that everybody is learning and has that access. I think that we have some unique situations in Columbia that are very different from other school districts, especially our surrounding school districts. We have almost 19,000 students in our schools, 3,000 right, um, staff and teachers. It's much, much bigger than a lot of the surrounding districts. And that means that sometimes solutions aren't going to be one size fits all. In my work, I spend a lot of times kind of facilitating difficult conversations, <laughs> um, working with students to help them figure things out. Um, and I think that that's a skill that's important and needed that I can 
continue to, to use with our board, with our administration. And I want to build relationships because that's going to be a big way that we start to make those changes. So I am invested and, and a supporter of our public schools. I've been doing the work and I want to be able to continue doing the work to take us from, from good all the way up to great again. Thank you. Okay, right on the dot. Okay, now we'll have some questions again. Uh, you have two minutes to answer and I'm going to rotate. We started with Mr. Cobbins for the um, introduction. So alphabetically, the first person to answer the first question will be Mr. Potter, then Ms. Snodgrass and Mr. Cobbins. Um, I don't see any hands up, so we'll go to the um, chat. Okay, I've, I've got a chat question from Allison Kaiser and she asks, as a retired teacher, I'd like to know how you plan to hear from teachers about issues and needs in the classroom. Cell phones are a major distraction, for example. One of you has indicated that behavior problems are a problem. That person implies that DEI is part of the, of the problem. And uh, that okay, probably so is, is for John Potter, but everybody's saying. So the question yeah. is, how do you plan to hear from teachers about issues and needs in the classroom? That's the question, really. So, Mr. Potter, you're first. Uh, yes. Um, I talk to teachers in the district a lot. Um, I think uh, privately and, and publicly, um, there's, uh, there's the uh, Transparency and Accountability Facebook group page that, um, that is really interactive with um, any uh, teachers, uh, community members, or parents that want to post on there. Um, I actually posted um, the Lang letter which has um, uh, caught a lot of traction. I think it really hits home with a lot of the issues that the teachers are facing in the district. So I really, um, I would really recommend that that people look at that, that Lang Leather. Um, it, it's, it's really a professionally written uh, document by a lot of teachers put their input in on that. And um, it, it, I've heard from a lot of other teachers that it really uh, hits the, the nail on the head. Um, also, I, I talk to uh, teachers privately. There's a lot of teachers in the district that don't want to um, speak out publicly uh, and because of fear of retaliation in in their um, work environment. So um, I will uh, continue to do that. I, I, I think listening to um, teachers gives you a good idea of what's going on. I, I've I've brought up behavioral issues in the classrooms and 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 the need for a district wide cell phone policy. I think um, I think that would be a, a a great tool for teachers to be able to um, stop worrying about um, policing students when it comes to cell phones and really getting back to what they are originally there to do, which is uh, teach students. So it goes back to uh, providing that educational environment for all students. And um, and really, uh, if there is behavioral issues and constant disruptions in the classroom, we need to really focus on what the district needs to do district wide to implement district wide policies to take those burdens off the teachers. Thank you, um, Ms. Snodgrass. Yes. Yeah. Um, one, I just want to say we have amazing teachers in the Columbia Public Schools. And so a piece of this communication is obviously making sure that teachers are getting the support that they need so that they can do their job, which is teaching, which we know that they can do. Um, communication, I think, needs to be happening on a lot of different levels. So communication with board members, um, we want teachers, I want teachers to feel comfortable being able to reach out. I know that there are teachers that I have spoken to um, that feel comfortable saying something about issues or concerns that they've had. Sometimes they're speaking for kind of a conglomerate like, hey, me and a bunch of folks are feeling this way. Sometimes it's really just about their particular feelings. And, and that's great. And, and they need to know that they can come to me, to any of us as board members, and they can share what they're feeling. And there's not going to be any uh, sorts of repercussions, right? We, we need to know what's happening 
if we're going to address it as a board member. I think the other thing is to make sure that communication is happening on all different levels, right? So that communication also has to be happening for teachers to have the support they need. It has to be happening in the right way between the administration in Aslan and the building administration, between the building administration and between the teachers in the classrooms. We know that teachers also sometimes do need um, or could use additional trainings. And we want to make sure that what is being provided by the district is what teachers actually need and want. And so again, communication, asking teachers to complete surveys. We talk to the CMNEA and MSTA presidents. Um, but generally speaking, want teachers to feel open and able to come and, and want to hear what they have to say about what's happening in their schools and in their classrooms. Okay, thank you. Um, there. And Mr. Cobbins. Uh, yes, uh, I think that was a great question. And one thing that I want to be very clear about is that I truly support our teachers. And I one of the things that I am uh, basing my campaign on is I have those skills and those abilities just to bring people together, like parents, teachers, uh, educators, administration, uh, community folks, grandparents. And I think that bringing those, all of those people together that we can solve most of our issues. And uh, I also uh, would like to introduce to the board a new process about listening and bringing people to the table and resolving issues. And it's called um, result-based accountability. And that is a process that's fairly new as I have been facilitating the jobs and workforce development through the county and the city of Columbia. Also at that table was housing folks and people from our, uh, early childhood uh, education. And I do believe that a lot of the issues that we are having, uh, when we introduce and have our children that are able to read and to comprehend at by the third grade level, a lot of those issues will go away that we're having in terms of attendance, in terms of, uh, of uh, behaviors. In other words, uh, we just have to get together, sit down and work through this and it can be done. Thank you. Thank you. See, the first chat question I saw was, would you pledge not to not commit? Or would you please, uh, I'll reword it. Would you please pledge to commit to not running for additional offices during your school board term? And so we'll start with Ms. Snodgrass. Um, I have no desire or interest to, to running for anything else. I barely have time to run for this office while I'm also holding it and have a job and family and everything else. Um, so I, I, I think that there are legalities around sort of what you can and can't run for. Um, and so I, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's, that's what I have to say to that. I, I don't really have two minutes worth to, to share okay, on that. That's fine. <laughs> um, Mr. Cobbins. Yes, uh, well, I actually con concur with Jane here because I think that the uh, for me and my process, uh, just as I served on the uh, Vision Commission with the City of Columbia for four years, uh, I took that voluntary experience on and it was a full time commitment that I had to it. And just as if in the RBA system with the county and the city for the past two years. Uh, I am phasing out of that now because they have reached a pivotal point, whereas the results are, are coming in. So uh, when I get on the school board, I will commit all of my voluntary time to the school board and not just to the board, but to the community. I will continue to advocate on parents becoming more involved in the school system, become more involved with as many of the, our children's teachers as they can. And the uh, good news is, is that I think that the teachers are doing everything. And I'm just overjoyed by just sharing an experience with you. 
just a few days ago, a teacher called and, and, and was concerned about a grandchild of mine not being in the classroom. And, and the issue was resolved. And again, the parents have to become more involved in that system. But the teachers are doing everything that they can under the circumstances to do the best job that they can. So I'm in support of that. Thank you. Okay. And finally, um, Mr. Potter. Yes. Um, I, I know this question is referring to me. I am running for a, a state office as well. There's a little bit of overlap in the um, campaigning process, about two weeks, and I will be pretty busy during that time. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a community um, guy. I'm, I'm devoted to my community. And I think serving uh, for the community is... Um, should be looked up to, you know? So, um, I think when, um, I run for my other office, if I was to win a school board, I would, um, I would have to, uh, quit my full-time job to, uh, open up time for that. And, 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 um, things have been put in place in order for me to do that. So, um, as far as time restraints or anything, I, I think that I've been so involved with the school board that um, the learning curve for me would be less because like I said, I've attended almost every school board meeting for the last four years. Um, I've been talking to parents. I've been talking to community members. I've been talking to teachers. Um, so, you know, it's, I've, I've, I've kind of been doing a lot of the responsibilities of the school board for the past four years. So um, I think, I think that um, I could do both. Uh, no problem. Um, the, um, the, the, the fact that I want to um, be um, involved in the community and have been involved in the community is uh, is a good thing. So uh, I think the more um, people that you talk to and the more things that you're involved in, um, the more you understand exactly what the needs of the community are. So um, that's why I've uh, entered my race, my foot into this race and um, the state representative race as well. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. Um, uh, we have one in the chat here from Bree Mink. Uh, uh yeah. do, do you acknowledge there is a rise in anti LGBTQ <laughs> bullying and hate crimes in schools nationally and at TPS? And how would you specifically address the needs of LGBTQ students to ensure that they, they are provided an equitable learning environment free from harassment and bullying? Okay, let's see. The first one to speak last time was Ms. Dogress, so this time, uh, Mr. Cobbins, you start. Well, I think that uh, bullying uh, has been one of those uh, issues that have uh, been in the school systems and in our communities all over the place. Bullying has been an issue. And again, I think that, that we have a responsibility as board members to, to come up with and to uh, uh, resolve this issue by coming up with policies uh, to let everyone know that bullying is not acceptable. One of our responsibilities is to make sure that the school properties, the school facilities, the school classrooms has to be a clean, safe place so that our children can learn and our teachers can teach. And bullying should not be accepted on any level because it is one person intimidating another. So we have to be conscious of that and we have to come up with policies uh, that, that are uphill and we have to hold students, parents, teachers, and the whole community and the whole school district. We all have to be held accountable to make sure that we eradicate bullying from our system. We're not gonna. We're not perfect, but at least that is an issue, and we need to address it as a district. Okay, thank you. Thank um, you. I, I assume you're done. Yeah. Um, next, uh, Ms. Mr. Potter. Yeah. Um. I've actually. Um talked to the uh, school board, sent some emails out to try to um, to address this issue. I would echo um, what what Alvin said as well, is that, you know, uh, bullying, it has been a problem. And there there actually are a lot of um, 
things in the district to uh, deal with bullying and, um, you know, uh, places where you can um, report bullying and things like that. There's um, uh, processes and steps that can be taken when it comes to bullying, you know, starting with your um, with, uh, of course, telling the teacher and then the and if it persists, then it can um, then you can move up to the building administrator. And then if it does persist, I I, I welcome uh, uh, parents and, and even students to make um, public comments at the school board meeting uh, to get their uh, concerns heard. Um, one of the things that I know that the district has um, not addressed quite yet is um, having a district wide bathroom policy. I know that stirs up a lot of um, tension with uh, between students, you know, and and so whatever um, you your opinion is on the bathroom policy, I think there needs to be a, a district wide um, policy. So nobody's confused or um, caught off guard by um, some of the things that are going on in some of the schools around the district. So really, you know, as a as a board member, I think it's important to to create policies that really take the burden off of, you know, uh, individual schools administrations and um, and um, from the teachers. So that that um, the the board could address those issues. I've actually sent emails out months ago um, trying to address these issues and um, with no avail. Um, there is no district wide policy when it comes to um, things in the district. So I, I would recommend um, definitely um, coming up with a district wide policy, especially for um, bathrooms. Thank you. Um... Next. Um... Well, I've got as another one here from, from Nancy Copenhaver. Yeah. As a, as I, a representative. Did I get to of... answer that one? Sorry. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to answer yet <laughs> on the other one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Snodgrass. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I just. <laughs> I'm so. I, All right. I, I know we keep but rotating. I hear what so you it's... have to say. Thank Beautiful. You. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple of pieces of it. I think that one, we need to think about bullying and behavioral issues as as both Mr. Cobbins and Mr. Potter have stated for all of our students, right? We we know that bullying is happening happening in our schools. We need to make sure that the behavior plans that are in place um both are working but also that they're being implemented with fidelity so that we know all of our administrators, all of our teachers know what the expectations are so that things can be dealt with appropriately. When it comes to our LGBTQ students, I think it's especially important that they know, first of all, that they are supported, um, that they are recognized for their full selves, and also that any bullying that occurs specifically around their identity as part of the LGBTQ community is going to be dealt with right away. I think that bullying that results because of someone's identity, because of who someone is, um, is really important to take sort of, not that other bullying isn't serious, right? But But this is sort of like really key. We need to make sure that we're really on it. And if something happens um, or if there's a procedure, I sometimes restorative practice, sometimes talking, sometimes you can approach the person or sometimes there's an underlying issue. But when it's about someone's identity, I think as a district, we need to be really firm that that is unacceptable. All bullying is unacceptable. That's particularly unacceptable because we want all of our students to feel safe and welcome and secure so that they can get the education that they need when they're in our buildings and out in the community. Hey, thank you. And I'm sorry that I just, my brain just had a lapse. That's all there is to it. Um, but we got uh, all three of you now. Um, Let's see, now we were going to start on Nancy Copenhaver's uh, question. Uh, as a representative of the community and supporter of Columbia Public Schools, how do you see your obligation to advocate against legislative actions that would adversely affect support for CPS? Okay, legislative actions that would adversely affect us. What is your role to deal with that? And we will start with um, Mr. Potter. Yes, um, I think that um, 
you know, my my main obligation is to uh, students and parents. Um, I I do support the district. I think the district is doing well. Um, I of course I think it could do better. Um, that's why my my children do go to the district. Um, but when it comes to school choice, there are families and students that are in failing schools, you know, and, and CPS is at the verge of losing their accreditation. You know, I've been pointing this out for years. And and so when when you say that you don't want to have choice for parents to make the best decision for their students, it's it seems a little selfish to me. Um, our district per student um, collects a lot of money um, compared to other districts. Um, also, there is choice to where kids go to school when it comes to employees of CPS. I think that, you know, as, as an employee of CPS, you're allowed to send your kid to whatever school um, you would like. And then also the, um, the lottery schools, uh, they, they quote unquote, take money from the district, you know, um, as far as transportation is concerned. So and I and I support lottery schools. One of my uh, or all three of my kids attended a uh, lottery school. And I've actually during this campaign have really promoted those because I think it's a good way to uh, diversify the district and, and school buildings. And it's been a very uh, big tool for um, for my children. So, you know, I think that um, we need to err on um, the parents knowing what's best for their students and, and just realizing that CPS isn't the same district it was when I went to school. You know, there's a, um, this wasn't a option. It wasn't a thought when CPS was not so close to losing its accreditation. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Ms. Snodgrass. Um, I think as a school board member, and one of the things that, one of the reasons that I'm actually running for school board again is because I do believe so strongly in our public schools and it is part of my responsibility. I apologize. I'm on my work computer. <laughs> I had a phone call come in. Not sure if you could hear that. Um, it is part of our responsibility to, to really be making sure that our schools have the resources that they need to make the improvements that are needed. So while I would dispute that we're close to losing accreditation because this is a new process um, on the MSIP. And so we know that we have improvement and we see where the points are and and we know that we're we're doing fine and making improvements. Um, that's a that's a different conversation. But if you have legislation that puts in uh parameters where somebody where money is going to be taken out of the public schools, it makes it that much harder to make the improvements that we need to make within our schools. And so I do believe that I have an obligation to be very clear about the fact that public taxpayer dollars should be staying in our public schools where there is oversight from an elective board and where there is um, accountability to the public who elects that school board. And, and I feel that very, very strongly. Okay, thank you. Um... Mr. Cobbins. Well, hey, folks, listen. Uh, yes, if if the person wants to take the child out, that's that's a decision that they make. But as far as I am concerned, I don't believe in running away from problems. I believe in staying and resolving them, and that's one of the things that I'm running on is bringing the parents and, the, and the, the grandparents and the community into being more involved with our school systems. Because if there's an issue, uh, we somehow we got to get to that everybody has a voice and their voices need to be heard. And I think that the school system in its current state and with the board, that they are reaching out to the community itself so that we can all get together and resolve the issues. So therefore, I am not in favor of moving a child out of a district because of an issue. Instead, 
I will always advocate on resolving the issue, becoming more involved in the system. Just imagine how one must feel to have to go from one problem into another problem. It is better to stay in the problem that you have, be involved, help fix that problem and thrive. So no, I, I, I just don't think that that's the answer by leaving public schools to go elsewhere. I'm not in favor of that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, um, why don't I, I see, I have um, a personal question. Well, I'll ask the question. Um, suppose somebody wants to take a, it could be anybody, a, a citizen, a parent, anybody says, I don't want a particular book in your li school libraries. What is your position on that? And we'll start with Ms. Slagrass. Is that who we started with? That's not who. No, yeah. I haven't started for a few of them, I think. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I so one as a school board member, my job, again, is to make sure that we have policies, that we have oversight and that our teachers and our experts have the resources that they need to do their job. Our experts about the books are our media specialists and our librarians. And we also want our students to have access to a wide range of material so that they can be exposed to different viewpoints, to different perspectives, so that they can understand the world around them and learn to be critical thinkers. I do not believe it is the district's responsibility to ban books because somebody doesn't like a particular storyline or they are upset about how a particular character is portrayed. I think that is different than if there is a real issue. So we do have policies that allow parents, if they have concerns about materials, to report that. And we have a process so that that can be looked at and it can be determined. But there are also legalities, right? There are laws about what can and can't be there, but we are following those laws. So as far as I'm concerned, there's, there's not really much to to be looking at because we know that everything that we are making accessible to our students meets the requirement of the law. We know that students need to be exposed to all these different things. They need to be able to have conversations. They need to be able to have hard conversations. And it's okay to look at something, to look at a person or a family structure or a culture that is different than yours and to try to understand it. Where are these people coming from? Where am I coming from? Where do I have similarities? Where do I have differences? These are really important pieces, again, in becoming critical thinkers and becoming world citizens. And those are skills we're trying to instill in our students. So that's where I would stand there. We, we need our books in our libraries for our students. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh... Cobbins? Cobbins? <laughs> yes. Um, I think that, uh, you know, that it is our, from what I gather, it is from our legislators and, and our governors and others uh, in our community who are banning the books. Uh, and I think that before we start banning books, we should have input from the educators, we should have input from the parents, we have input from the school administrators. And, and, and you know, because like Jane said, books are, are good, that's how we learn. That's why reading and comprehension is so important. Uh, when I went to school, at high school, at Hickman High School, uh, I was taught the uh, theory of evolution. And it was a great conversation in class, and it has spurred my thinking even until today. So I don't know if, I, I think that the people that are banning the books are not including the educators and people who are devoted to our education systems are involved in at that table. Because if they are, I would be very disappointed in it. So therefore, uh, I just think that if a book is going to be banned, it must be banned by the teachers, by the, uh, the uh, we have to be a part of the process. 
the superintendent, the, the school board. Thank you. That's it. All right, thank you. And Mr. Park. Yes, um, when when I look at this issue, I look at it like, um, like uh, age appropriateness, you know, just like movies are rated, right? So um, just because a movie is rated R doesn't mean that it's banned. So I think that language is a little bit um, uh, miss, uh, just isn't, I, I don't think nobody's banning books. I think it's just about edge age appropriateness. Um, I really haven't seen that in Columbia Public Schools. So, you know, for me, if there's, you know, graphic nudity in a book, then it probably is not appropriate for elementary school students. If there's excessive language in a book, then it might not be appropriate for elementary school students, you know. So uh, I don't think any book should be banned. I just think that, you know, it has to be age appropriate, you know, just like a rated R movie or, or PG-13 movie, you know. Nobody says that a, a a movie is banned because a um a thirteen year old can't go see an R rated movie at the theater. So you know, I, I who makes these decisions? I think it's um it should be you know up to the community to some extent. Um, but you know, like I said, if it's nudity, if it's uh, graphic language, then um it it needs to be age appropriate. So um. That's that's what I rely on. I don't think <clears throat> there should be anything banned. I think everything's educational to some extent. You know, it just it's about age appropriateness, and so um, that's what I would rely on. Thank you. Let's see here, um, Alice Turner has a question. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Oh, uh, I thought that I put it in the chat, but basically, I was just I would. But maybe you can't see it. Um, I, I was just getting to it. So, all right, sure. you say it out loud. Go ahead. You, you just read it. Thank you. It says, funding is key to our schools. Uh, what have been recent cuts through the legislature and what potential impact proposed senior property tax cuts? What, what are they? Uh, what is your position on all of that? Basically, is that what you're asking? What is your position on? on uh, funding and senior property tax credit, uh, property tax cuts. And we started last time with Ms. Snodgrass, so we start this time with Mr. Cobbins. Well, I think that the seniors uh, deserves breaks because the seniors are usually uh, retired and uh, are usually out of the workforce. And I, I really um, struggle with this one simply because uh, the legislators sometimes create these laws or these rules. Uh, I would like to have seen seniors involved in the negotiation part of this. Uh, I can't hear you, Mr. Cobbins. Um, yeah, Mr. Cobbins, I can't hear you. Did you you're not on mute, but I can't hear you. Am I having is it am I the only one having a problem? I, I can't hear him either. I, have a question. There. I, I can't hear him. Hello? There now. I think you're I can hear you now. No. I've lost contact and I can't hear anything. Oh, you can't hear anything either. Alice needs to ask her question again. Hello? Hello? Um, uh, Alvin? Hello? Can you hear us? We're having some difficulties with the audio, I guess, with our Zoom connections. Um, well, can... Can you see me? Now I can... Hello? Hello? I can't. I can barely hear. <clears throat> Dave Taylor, can you offer any help to him? Sorry, I stepped away. What's the problem? And you're gone. Well, Hello. sometimes we can't okay, hear Mr. Back. Cobbins, and sometimes he can't hear us. Uh, uh, I'm going to start you all over, Mr. Mr. Cobbins. Can you hear yeah. me? 
Yes, I can hear you now. Why don't we start from the scratch? Two minutes, because I I couldn't hear you. So just, uh, again, um, funding is key to our schools. What about the proposed senior property tax cuts and any other piece of cuts? Can you hear me? I'm going to say a cuss word. <laughs> I can't hear you. I, you're gone. Yeah, now I can come in and out. So, can you? Hello? Say something. Yeah, yeah hello? Keep, keep talking, Mr. Cobbins. I okay, I will keep talking. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, yes. Uh, I just think that uh, that there needs to be more involvement uh, from the uh, the folks that these laws that they bring down that's affecting us. And if we're not at the table and others like our legislators are making laws and handing them down, uh, then they're not uh, most of the time they're not in our favor. So therefore, I have a big question about that. And I don't uh, uh, really, uh, I can't go a wholeheartedly into a legislative action without the folks that it's affecting not being a part of that process. So in that answer, it may be a little blight, but it's just how I feel. If, if something is going to affect me or the school district, then we should be a part of that conversation at the conception of that idea. Okay, did that, did that come through? <laughs> I still can't hear you now. But anyway, oh. thank you. That came through loud and clear, thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you. All right, Mr. Cobbins, and then next we have Mr. Potter. Yeah. Um... I, as a school board member, I would, um, there's going to be a lot of things going on in the state, you know, and what's going through legislation and things that are trying to get passed and stuff. As a board member, I would just focus on um, CPS trying to do the best job that they can do. Um, if we are um, educating, holding all the kids to the highest standard possible, uh, producing um, high academic performance scores, raising that accreditation score up, then this these kinds of things that are happening, you know, at the state level, um, will, will cease to exist. You know, I think that it's one of the reasons why there's a lot of things going on at the state level is because, um, Columbia public schools, um, is, is not, um, serving all students. Well, um, there's a lot of students that, that don't know how to read, don't know how to do math. You know, and that's because um, CPS really isn't providing the teachers or the classrooms with that uh, learning environment. You know, I think behavioral issues have really um, gone up um, in my transparency and accountability group. There's a list of, of, of schools and how many times the, the police have been called to those schools. And, you know, in two of the high schools, it's over 200. And so in, in, in one year. So. There's a lot going on in the district that wasn't going on in the district, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So we really need to focus on what has caused those issues. And that's why I'm running, you know, is because I think I know what's caused those issues. I think that it's a um, it's it's lack of diversity on the board. It's um, it's it's um, it's the equity part of diversity, equity and inclusion. And so we need to focus on the root causes of of why our district is failing a lot of students. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, and Ms. Oh, look, Ms. Snodgrass, you're there somewhere. Okay, what do you have to say? Yeah, um, so I think a lot of the funding stuff, again, like I've said before, Funding for our public schools is so important and adequate funding for our public schools is so important. We know that in the Columbia School District, it's something like 60% of our revenue that supports our schools is coming from property taxes. So this is this proposed legislation 
has the potential to have a really big impact, but we don't know what it is. And I think that's the other thing that is so um, difficult when you think about budgeting and trying to make sure that our teachers and our students, um, our facilities, right, that we have all the resources that we need because so much of it is variable and there are conversations that are still ongoing, right? Even if this gets voted in, if if Boone County, for example, right, votes that they do want to do this, it's unclear where the money specifically comes from. It's unclear how it potentially affects the tax rate for everybody else. There are limits in the law to how much the tax rate can be raised based on the money that was collected in comparison to prior years. So if certain people are paying less, we obviously also would want to make sure that that burden is not shifting onto others. We also want to make sure that it's not just becoming another way for those that have adequate retirement funds to be getting out of paying their fair share. The schools are a community resource and they need to be funded by the community. And especially in our district, that is the majority of the money is coming from that community base in terms of property tax. So I think that one in particular, but also some of the other proposals, we need to we need more information, but also we need to make sure that we continue to have the adequate funding and the resources that we need to make, like I've said before, the improvements and to keep building and making things better. Okay, thank you. I see here that it is now 12.58. And I would like people to be able to um, give their three minute wrap up. Um, and so last time we started alphabetically with Mr. Cobbins. Now, how about the three minute wrap up? We'll go move to Mr. Potter and you can have um, a three minute, whatever you want to say, uh, right. winding up whatever yeah. you want to say. All right. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I do appreciate you guys putting on this forum. And so um, one of the things that I really wanted to focus on uh, last on Monday at the school board meeting, um, there was a presentation by the chief equity officer that that talked about how um, out of school suspensions are down 45 percent and how um, ISS in school suspensions are down 42 percent and how uh, office referrals are down for discipline are down 38%. And, you know, with, with those numbers, it, it sounds like the district is just doing a great job with behavioral issues. And now, like I said, with my, I have an ear to the community. I've talked to a lot of teachers and I know personally, I've heard multiple times that, that teachers feel like they are not being, um, uh, handle the behavioral issues aren't being handled uh, adequate, adequately. So when they do send a teacher or a student to the office, they are they're back, you know, for cussing them out or um, uh, disrupting the class. Um, that they're they're put right back into the school into the classroom, and you know I think that uh, like I said the the list of how many um just how many times the cops have been been at the schools this year and. So, you know, there's a big disconnect on what's going on in the schools. Yeah, okay, there's a lot of people, not a lot of students that aren't getting suspended, that aren't doing in-school suspension, and the teachers aren't sending them to the office, but is that creating the behavioral issues or is that a sign of the behavioral issues being fixed? And I think we really need to ask ourselves those questions. Is, as far as the, the um, educational environment, from what I've heard and what I've seen, like I said, I, I have three kids in the school district, elementary, middle school, and high school, that these things are escalating. And so when I go to a school board meeting and they say that, that you know, the school suspensions are down, the, the in-school suspensions are down, and, and kids are going to the office less, but we're hearing about, I mean, I mean, just like literally two days ago, you know, there was a fight and a kid was 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 hitting another kid with their 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 Stanley water bottle and then hit the teacher with it. And, you know, it, there's there's things going on. And 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 I think there's um there's a big disconnect from what's from reality and from uh these these numbers that are being presented, you know, and 
And it's hard to for the district to hold themselves accountable, you know. And so as a community, we have to realize, are these numbers hurting that educational environment or is it proof that um, behavioral issues are are being handled and in, in a big way, like they suggest? OK, thank you very much. Um, next is Miss Snodgrass. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Um, one, first, I just want to thank you for having me, for having all of us here to talk to you. Really appreciate the opportunity. I also want to um, apologize to Mr. Cobbins that when I get done, I am probably going to log out immediately because I have another meeting and, and we're running a little past one um, to, to not be hearing his closing statement. I always appreciate hearing from Mr. Potter and Mr. Cobbins as well. I am running for re-election because I truly believe in our public schools and specifically I believe in the Columbia public schools. I think that we have a lot to offer. We are doing really good things. We have really great teachers. We have really caring administrators. We have parents and a community that is involved and invested in our schools and we can make it so much better. We know that there are issues. We're not trying to hide the issues. It's something I have deeply appreciated about the a shift in culture with the school board these last few years, as well as some of what the administration is doing, is that we are we have the data and we're not hiding it. We know that these things are happening, and that's important because we can't address the issues until we know what the issues are and we know specifically where they're happening and what things are going on. So is everything happening as quickly as we all want it to happen? No, <laughs> right? Is everything that we want to happen going to always happen exactly the way we want it to? Again, probably no, but I do think that it's important work. I think we are moving in the right direction. I think we are addressing some of the really big issues, and I want to continue to be part of that work and part of that process in working with teachers, working with administrators, working with the community, working with students, hearing from our community, from all of our different stakeholders, and figuring out how do we make this the best opportunity for our students? How do we give them the skills that they need, both for right now and also for once they graduate, when they become adult members of our community, right? Because this is important. The schools are a resource, and we want to make sure that we are investing in them and that we're doing right by all of our students. So thank you all very much, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you very much. Okay, and I'm very glad you came. <laughs> now, I suppose. Uh, Mr. Cobbins? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running for the board, because I bring a, uh, a clean, fresh, and uh, energetic perspective. Uh, the board, the uh, superintendent, and uh, the teachers, you know, they're doing the best job that they can, and it's been an admirable job. But one of the things that, um, that I will be focusing on is looking at the school suspensions. I'll be focused on the attendance. And I think it's important that we also hold uh, our students accountable, just as we hold ourselves accountable, just as we hold our teachers accountable, that we have got to uh, resolve that issue with the disrespect. And one of the things that I want to bring is by uh, bridging that gap between our students and our teachers. Uh, I want to bring the, uh, that respect back together and the accountability back to the schools. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have a responsibility as a board to provide us clean and a safe environment for our students and our teachers and our administrator. And every parent deserves to know that. And the other thing that I want you all to know is that I am really going to be encouraging our teachers, our parents, our community, our administrators to all join in and become more active so that we can all celebrate when we get to that place where our schools are, are, are back on top again. They, we are one of the better schools 
districts and we always have been and I think that we always will be. And on that board, I will just try to make sure that I do everything that I can to bring us all together to resolve the issue so that we can stay a very strong school district. And I would appreciate your vote because I am committed and compassionate about the education system within Columbia Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobbs, Mr. Potter, and uh, Ms. Nygrass, I think is no longer here. And I will turn this over to Al Tacker. Thank you, Leslie. Good job.